Hi hey everyone, it's Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since we've done a calendar chat. I will admit that. Um, it's just been one of those things. So um, I hope you're not too annoyed at me. I've really not been in a filming mood. I have been colouring and I have been um, reading. Um, I've not really been in a filming mood. I've just not been with it. I've been... Jennifer's been up a few nights, so I haven't had a lot of sleep, to be fair. So I've been trying to catch up and get to bed when I can. So I thought I'd do a bit tonight. And after this film, I'll finish anything that's unfinished off camera. There won't be much, so you're not going to miss much. And you'll see the rest of it when I get to my completed pages. Mostly what I've been doing is patterns. Anyway, how are you? Are you guys okay? I hope so. I hope everything's... It's really hard to see which bits in this are sky and which is... Uh, you know, green. <laughs> it really is difficult. Oh, and I've got one of those pencils where the nib's broken. I don't know why I'm talking like that. It's because I'm watching this... this, this um, channel I pick up accents very easily and what tends to happen if I'm watching something a lot of the same thing I pick up accents of the people that I'm watching so and I've been watching this um, this channel and it's called uh, Finders Beepers yeah I still don't know what bit's supposed to be green and what's not I've, I've totally lost the plot on that yeah. I might just do it all green. Because <laughs> it looks like that should be sky. But then that looks like that should be sky. And that should be green. So I really don't know. I don't think it really matters to be honest. Because it could be different trees and things. So I don't worry about it too much. Um, so yeah. I'm watching this channel called um, Finders Beepers. In fact I will do all of this bit green. And over there. Um, Basically, it's these two chaps from the north, in you know, the UK, who do urban exploration. And they visit, they post one video up a week. And they um, come online and talk to people. They do, they do what's called a premiere. A premiere where you can uh, go and talk to people at the same time. So it's really cool. I only found them last week and I'm working my way through their back catalogue and I am loving it. So watching Italy videos at the moment, but yeah, it is really good. They are very good. I like urban exploration because I like looking. I like particularly like it if it's like buildings and stuff. I mean, uh, urban exploration also covers caves, um, but I don't. I'm not really into them in tunnels. I'm not really into particularly unless it's part of a a, a building. Uh, but you know, hospitals and schools, houses leisure centres, um, those sorts of places. I love watching it and I've, I've done a bit myself in the past, it was a long time ago, about 10 years now. Um, I only visited two very local places, I've never gone anywhere that's a, a, a long way away to do it but oh, this bloody pencil keeps breaking. Um, I visited a colliery and a church that was uh, abandoned now. Both I've now had their entrances bricked up and you can't get in there. So I've considered myself very lucky to have walked around when I did and get the photos I did. I just wish I could do it again. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, and I went with my dad. <laughs> I go with my dad urban exploring because he likes history as well. Oh, I've done it again. I think this pencil's knackered. Um, so, I mean, by all means, I would never say to somebody, don't do it, but just be very careful if you do. And, I mean, these two places, we went during the daytime, so I've never done a nighttime explore. Which is when a lot of urbexes do it, especially if it's in a, a built-up area or in a city, just because of being spotted. But I, uh, the only ones I've done were... Um, during the daylight and uh, so that's fine it's you know, it's not that 
you just got to be very, very careful because the police um, or security can catch you. And it's not a criminal offence in the UK at all. It's not. Whatever anybody tells you, it's not a criminal offence. It's called it a civil matter. Unless, of course, it's a defence building or something government, uh, then it becomes criminal. But generally, trespass in the UK is not a criminal offence. You could get arrested, but you won't get you won't get charged. The more likely is just to ask you to um, leave the premises. Um, usually, I think they arrest people to try and scare the bejesus out of them. But what they do is they. Um, it's a civil matter generally between you and the landowner um, and while the landowner could take you to court it's a very expensive thing and the reason is because it's tr it's classed as trespass um, as long as you don't break into somewhere obviously you're not committing a criminal offence so obviously if you went in and you broke a window and they got evidence that you broke said window then that's a criminal offence and you could be arrested if it's a, a, a trespass, say for instance there's a door open and you just go through it, you're trespassing, but you're not breaking in. You, you're entering. Uh, entering's not, it's not illegal. Uh, it's the breaking in part. But it's it can be quite dangerous. And by dangerous, what I mean is that a lot of the places that people like to explore are very decrepit they're falling down they're they're ancient not ancient in the sense that they're like from egypt but they're like some of them have been ban uh, abandoned for like 20 30 40 50 years and so they've got roofs it caved in walls down some of them are in a strip bare because they're going to or they were planning to turn it into something else or oh, it's been destroyed by vandals which is a bit of a problem in this country because we've got a load of scum sorry but I do think anybody that vandalizes anything is scum there's no need for it and um, it's not safe you could quite easily put your foot through a floorboard or walk through a door and there'd be nothing there and you fall down and break your neck or your leg something painful um, so it, it's just to just make sure you've got more than one person there's two or more of you you know if you want to do it it's up to you can't stop you and that you take if you go in especially at night or you're going somewhere to start take torches and take plenty of torches because batteries will run out at the most inopportune times now like I said I've only gone during the day so it's not really been a problem for me and I don't do it at the moment I'd love to but then I got find the people to do it for me and the reason I like it is I love the history of old buildings. I love the detailing, um, for instance, when we went to Penalta Colliery, which you can't get into now. They have literally bricked up the door. There was a metal door on there when I went, but it was actually open that day um, for some reason. I don't know why. And we walked around. The Victorian tiling on that building is absolutely stunning. It's the sort of tiling you'd expect to see in a public house of that era not in a flipping mine building it was the engine house it was but there it was and it was absolutely beautiful absolutely stunning oh, i forgot what color i used now oh, i'll just use that one i can't be bothered i know it's not that one but it'll do oh it's not far off um yeah absolutely gorgeous i'm gonna say it, it was it is absolutely stunning beautiful beautiful um yeah just just beautiful that's all i can say is beautiful um tiling and the the victorians made even the most industrial building a look absolutely stunning and they did um and it's quite amazing that they did but it wasn't just about being something that was um useful and practical they also made the buildings look nice which we don't well they say we do but i don't think we do i think the 70s tower blocks that were bloody horrible and the and the 60s 70s yeah. and the glass stuff we have today 
can be horrible. Sometimes it can be done very nice. There are people who don't like the Shard. I know somebody who lives in London and their apartment looks over the Shard and they hate it. I personally don't mind the Shard. I don't mind the Gherkin. But some of them I really hate, especially if it's not comp in keep competing, um, in keeping with the surroundings. And sometimes they're really not. So I just, I do really love taking photographs of old architecture and ruins and things like that. So it is a dangerous hobby and people do get hurt people have been killed doing it but uh if you've got any sense just go and watch somebody like explorer jake explorer josh finders beepers there are tons of them out there to find and watch let them do it for you let them do it for you and then you, you, you'll be safe and you can still see the, the beautiful stuff as well so like I said I'd like to go again but it's not likely to happen because I've got Jennifer I'm not going to risk my life to, you know and hurting Jennifer and you know stuff like that you know but yeah I know some great websites there's one called Opa City US and the website is opacity.us and it's run by a guy named Tom Kirsch who's also known as Mots, is his nickname and he is a very good photographer now his is all photography, it's not videos so if you like videos head to YouTube just type in Urban Exploration you'll get tons of it um, there are good channels and there are bad channels uh, Finders Beepers is very very funny uh, I think the guys are brilliant and then you've got the photography guys so um, like Tom you can actually buy prints of some of his and he has got some absolutely gorgeous photographs on there and you can type in you can go onto the website it does say sometimes what countries the, the locations are in so you can click on England he has done Wales um, but like, only like Denby Asylum I think I don't think he's done anything else um, so you can call Wales and it will give you, or oh sorry, you can call England and it'll give you a load of locations. I've looked at most of them and they are absolutely brilliant. His photography is just so, so, so stunning. And oh, they are beautiful pictures of these urban sites. Now, I try to do things legally. I mean, as I said, it's, it's a civil offence, not a criminal offence, but... So, for instance, it, somewhere like Big Pet, which is a, a mining museum in Blavon, it's not very far from here. I've been there once when I was a kid, still going strong. It's a free museum. And as soon as they open up, I hope to go there with Jennifer. She'll be a bit older, so she'll be fine. And with Paul. And take my camera and do some serious photography there. And I don't just take photographs of the buildings, the whole buildings, but of the details. So I, that's what I like about photography, I like going in close up and having a look at the details. I have got to sort out my photographs. They are in a state, I haven't done it for years because of having Jennifer. So it's going to be hard, even now, she just wants to sit on me all the time. I have found a way of, of reading, uh, like on my phone if I want to, or colouring a little bit as long as it's only a pattern and nothing too complex. But yeah, it, it gets very, very difficult to do anything when you've got a small child that just wants to sit on you all the time. It's nice that she wants to cuddle me because she's not going to want to do that forever. There will come a time when she won't want to sit and cuddle mummy and she'll be like, mum, leave me alone, I'm busy. So um, I do try and make the most of it. But I also am a human being and I need space to do my own things, whether it's colouring or eBay or sorting out my photographs. I've got two external hard drives and both of the most, uh, uh, one's the main one, one's a backup and they're both a bloody mess. I need, I need to plug it into my, my big, my new laptop. There's not enough storage space actually on the computer. It's all like one drive but it's perfect for eBay and uploading videos from and I can do stuff upstairs in the bedroom. Um, it should be living upstairs in the bedroom at the moment it's living down here because I've let Paul use it because it's faster than the old one. It's better. It's got a better video camera on it, but you know, webcam for when he he zooms with his friends. And if it's down here, it stays down here, and I do stuff down here, and that's fine. I might take it up with me when I go to bed, but I also do have to charge up 
my camera batteries and I've only got half a cable for that because I lost the oh, I keep losing cables but there you go that is the way it is I'm not gonna worry too much about it oh it does sound terrible I think I'll use this leather colour I think that's leather yes nice colour for the window frame actually I might even use it for the window let me just have a quick look at the colour let me decide not the window but the walls are sort of a golden it is actually a nice colour. Yeah, we'll use this one. Yeah, so um, for the... Oh, what was I going to say? What was I saying? Yeah, I need to, to get in and sort them out. I used to take a lot of photographs, both film and digital. Now, I like using film because I like the hands-on experience, but I also love working with a digital camera. I love how clear the photographs are most of the time. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to... have a look at some of my photographs I have, I have a, a, a blog I think it's called travels with my camera but if you just go on to google and type in Andrea Pryke photography and I think that's actually the web address is andreaprykephotography.wordpress.com or something like that and you will see loads of my photos not all of them but loads of them up until around 2017 and then of course with Jennifer it got very hard and I was also doing a lot of film so I wasn't doing as much now. I'm not doing anything at the moment. All the photos I take are on my, my mobile phone and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But I do want to put some of my older digital images onto my Instagram. But they're all on my hard drive. So I've got to get the hard drives out and really have a look at what I've done and sort them out it's terrible and I even print off photographs I print my photographs and I haven't done that for years I haven't put them into an album for years there was a time where I put all my photographs in one album regardless of what they were so if they were like um like really arty shots you'd go in now I've stopped doing that and I'm just keeping them for references in boxes um in envelopes in boxes but um, I'm put, the photo albums have become personal ones. And I, do you know what? I haven't got many photographs of Jennifer printed up. I've got about three. And then two of those are from the nursery. No, th I've got four. Two of them, three of them are from nursery. And one was the one that was taken in the hospital the day she was, day after she was born. She was born at nearly midnight. Um, she was born on the 31st of January at, at like a minute to midnight. And it was taken on the 1st of February. So about, yeah, barely 12 hours later. Or around 12 hours later and yeah so I look a state but she looks gorgeous I'd had a shower by that point so at least my hair was clean but it hadn't been brushed or anything <laughs> so so yeah I mean and I, photography for a long time was my main hobby um, I think I took up colouring because it's quite an artistic thing and I was doing both side by side and then, of course, when Jennifer came along, I just couldn't do the photography anymore. Because I just don't have the time to edit the photos. Or I could, if I wasn't doing this, maybe. But I don't want to sit at a desk editing photos all day or all evening. Because I spend most of my day at a computer when I'm at work. And it, you know, I got so far behind. It's like you get behind and you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. But I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to start very, very soon. I want to get them sorted. I've got three boxes of photographs on top of a, of a bookcase filled with photo albums. And it doesn't even go up as far as when I met Paul. It's terrible. I've got to get it up to date. Slowly. And what I do is, although I've printed out lows, I edit them down and still take out some of them. I'm a bit more picky now as to which ones I'm going to get printed anyway. Oh, I'm just going to stop the camera a sec. Okay, so Paul's just gone to the bathroom, so he's come downstairs. Um, yeah, so I've really got to sort my photographs out. And and get them printed up, so I can get ones of Jennifer printed up. But, you know. I've also got a uh, me tax information for Google. I haven't done it yet. You have to do it every few years, apparently. I have no idea what I'm doing with that, because it's all confusing, because it's all an American company and all that stuff. I'll have to have a look when I, I can. Okay, right, he's gone back up now. So yeah, I do need to sort them out. Terrible. But I do so love... 
photography and I always have and I like to have a physical copy of my prints to look at I love looking through my old albums I like looking through the ones online as well so I think it just works and I need to order some prints of some of them but I need to do the album I've got I mean I think when Jennifer goes to school and she's in wraparound nursery so you know because we get 30 hours of free childcare during term time and three hours through holidays um, and through the holidays three weeks of holidays as well I'm trying to look um, it'll be easy because I'll have the afternoons free uh, depending as long as I can start at near enough the same time because she'll be in nursery till three so they'll pick her up and she'll go and do nursery for two or three o'clock. So I'll have that time free to do eBay or colouring videos. Because I said I said, I said before the other day, although I wouldn't be able to do it in here because if he's working from home still, he'll be in this room. I hopefully still be working from home. Um, I'll be able to set it up, the camera up over on the coffee table and just do it on there because it's a big enough table and it's a very pale grey I think I might go for a slightly darker one I don't want to go too dark but you can't even see the colour on it and then I can, you know, I can sit and say right I'm going to um, I'm going to spend the day doing today and tomorrow's eBay and get it all ready so I've got this into it today and tomorrow and then tomorrow I'm gonna do uh, some filming and then uh, a load of filming and then the next day I'm gonna do more eBay and then the day after that I'm gonna film a colouring chat or uh, and then the day after uh, you know and then the rest of the day I'm gonna finish doing my thing and then on the Friday which will be the last day I said do enough eBay for the entire weekend and get it that way so Curtains look like they should be the same colour as the bedspread, but I'm going to make it slightly darker. I am so sick of using blue. I am not kidding you. I am sick of blue. But I want the dark, the curtains to be slightly darker. Or to be darker completely. Because, yeah, just to break it up a bit, because it's so dull. <laughs> Doing all this blue. So there's the dark one, there's the light one, and let's go. We'll do this bit over here first. So this isn't going to be a horrendously long video. Um, like I said, I will finish it off afterwards. It's also a good excuse to use these um, Monarch pencils, which I don't use as, you know, I do use them, I use them a lot, but some of these colours I haven't used very much. So it's nice to have a look. So I'm going to colour this in. Well, yeah, I've done a load of pages this month. I don't know how many. It's because I haven't been in the mood for, for filming and I do, I am so sorry for that. Uh, obviously, I'll be filming my end of the month videos fairly soon. Um, they'll be upstairs, I think, because I can do them in the bedroom and it saves me lugging everything downstairs. All the supplies that I've bought, because I've bought a few supplies this month. All the books I've bought, all the books I've coloured in. But you might even get my haul on Tuesday because I can't see me getting anything after tomorrow. I might get some, one tomorrow in Tesco because Relax With Art is out. So I might get one or two if they're out. And, and, and you know, I like those little books. They're really nice. They have some good pictures. Um, but yeah, so I might. I'm likely to get at least. Oh, I've broken that one already at least two of their two books tomorrow and that then I can't see anything coming the only thing that might come before the first of April is Johanna Basford's World of Wonders which I've got on pre-order but it's still scheduled for delivery on April the 1st so yeah could be an April Fool's Day I might not get it all or I might get it early um but I'm thinking unless I get a dispatch note tomorrow and I'm not going to film until the evening after Jennifer's gone to bed so unless I get a dispatch note tomorrow It's not going to come. Well, it could possibly come Tuesday or Wednesday, I guess. But I don't think so. 
and it can always go across into the next month which as I said is going to be quite a big colouring book haul but more than likely a very very little or nothing supplies haul and the reason for that is I don't need any supplies at the moment uh, you know I'm not saying I'm not going to buy anything but I'm probably not I get my bonus from work this week and I said I'm going to save some of it for my holiday and I'm going to spend some on colouring books and I have got 14 I'm not joking 14 colouring books in my cart it comes to £99 something so there are some really cheap ones on there and there's some more expensive ones on there, like 11, 12 quid. And there's some on there that are 3.99. So it's it's just a matter now of um, me making the final decision. I, there's one I might change because I'm not sure I, I want it. So I might change it for something else that I want. Nothing from Jade Summer again this week. I, they seem to be struggling to put anything out. We're getting... We've had a few books from Ava Brown this month, three I think, and well, uh, I've had three, but nothing from Jade Summer, and I'm a member of the group and I do look out for them, and I haven't seen anything from them, so I'm wondering what's going on there, are they having trouble? They've only put out two books this year, and normally they put out one every week, with then, you know, almost every week, and then they have one month off a month, so normally it's three weeks out of four, say that they put out, and that would be blue as well, that they put out a new book and they haven't. And, you know, I'm not complaining because it's, 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 I got money for other things. Although, um, like I say, I'm going to cut down a bit now. Um, obviously, I'm getting this lot this month. But I'm not too worried about... Um, I can't get in. I have to turn it upside down. I do apologise because I'm left-handed I can't get in. If I was right-handed I could probably, you're gonna have to go down a bit thank you, get in a bit better so just let it, let it focus. Come on focus. No you can fit that in, there you go. Um, but I'm right-handed so I'm left-handed so I can't. I know people like their books spiraled down bound so they can get in but that would be even more awkward for me because my hands would be resting on the spirals. If it was from the top it'd be fine. But I'm not keen on spiral binding anyway. I, I quite I quite like the uh, I like these books. And I'm not bothered about perforated because I don't take them out. I know some people do because some people gift them to people, but you can just use like an exacto knife for that. And uh, I mean, I've got um, Jade Summer's Dinosaurs for Kids upstairs. I'm going to start colouring them in next month for Jennifer's room. I'm just going to get some A3 certificate frames and put them up on her wall. And the reason I'm going to put them in certificate frames is A, it won't damage the paintwork when I finally finish it. And B, when she gets, if she ever, if she gets out of dinosaurs, or uh, decide she wants something else, I can take them out and replace them um, with posters from pictures from magazines, stuff she's made herself, other pictures I've coloured if she wants them, and it's not going to damage the walls, you know, like blue tacking or stuff, like we all did when we were kids, because let's be honest, we did. Um, so the idea is to just put some frames up, and she, she can put photos up in them, to brighten up her room and I thought oh, I'll get some colouring I'll get a, a, like the dinosaur colouring book so I will do it it's, I'm going to start that next month I think they're very simple pictures so it's not going to be difficult and some will be done in markers some will be done in um, pencils I might even do a glittery one you never know it depends on how I feel they don't actually tell you what the, the dinosaurs are so I haven't got a clue Unless it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Stegosaurus, Dilophosaurus, Triceratops, possibly a Brachiosaurus, <laughs> any sort of flying dinosaur, a Pterodactyl or a Pteranodon. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not good. Jennifer is brilliant with their names, she is so good. She goes, oh it's this one, and it's like, yeah you're right, it is. They tell you the name and she's right, and you're like, whoa. 
I mean, I know a few of them. I know more now than I used to, I'm not going to lie. Now, Richard was always the one that was into dinosaurs. When he was a kid, like, you know? No. So now, we're on 30 minutes now, anyway. <laughs> um, I, I do enjoy the current chat. I just, I've just, like I said, I've not been feeling it this week. I've been... Jennifer's had me awake a few nights, so I've just wanted to go to bed. So I've gone upstairs, coloured for like 20 minutes and relaxed and then gone to sleep. I was sat last night, because this I'm filming this on Saturday. So Friday night, got her to bed. Sat down here watching TV with Paul for a bit. We went up to bed. I was watching Finders Beepers for a little bit and colouring a picture. I've got a few upstairs to try and finish this month, but I'm not going to worry if I don't. They just rolled over into the next month, don't they? I mean, that's the thing. It's not the end. I'm trying to get my whips down, but again, I'm not even worrying too much about them. It'll happen. And it will. And then, just as I was thinking, oh, I'll go to bed and I'm going to go to sleep. I hear, Mummy! 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 I'm like, oh, God, blimey, she's awake. So, I turn it all, well, I put it onto pause. And then I go out to see her and she's standing by a doorway. Um, what's the matter, Jen? I want to cuddle. All right, Jen. I'm just going to pop to the bathroom because by this time I've thought, oh, I need the loo. So I go to the bathroom and I come back. She's still standing there waiting. Patient, mind. I give her that. Once, you've got, once she's up, you're up. She's, she has a, has a moment, but she can be quite patient, which is surprising for a three-year-old. Other times, not so much. Uh, like when the adverts come on. And um, I take her, I give her a cuddle and I put her back to bed. And then she does it again. So do it again and then guess what she does it again this time i'm thinking no i'm not doing it i'm going to see if she'll go back to bed on her own no paul gets up this time bless him but she's still crying for me so i get up and i go what's wrong now and she's like more cuddles so like, all right paul goes back to bed i said go back to bed it's fine well we, we put her back eventually put her back to bed paul goes back to his bed and he croaks out of sleep and I thought, I'm going to go and sleep in the spare room because she's going to do it again. And she did. So she's like, where's Daddy? I said, Daddy's asleep. Shh, leave him alone. We don't want to wake him up. You know, I try not to wake him up. And she went, more cuddles, Mummy. I went, all right. So I sat on the floor on some like cushions in her room. And she's just cuddling into my arms. And it's really nice. And we're there for about five, ten minutes. And I'm like, are you ready to go to bed now? And she goes, yeah. And she looks at me and goes, you stink. I'm like, great, I've just had a shower not long back. <laughs> I said, like, thanks for that, Jen. I'm sure I don't, but hey. Anyway, this time she actually went to sleep. By this time, it's like 4 a.m. And I'm like, ugh. And so for the next hour, I'm lying there in bed, trying to relax, listening for any sound of movement in her room. Every time there's a thump, a bang, and it might be from next door, every time a child cries because their kids are next door on both sides I'm like oh my god she's gonna start again in a minute she didn't and eventually I went back to sleep but god knows what time it was and then she was up at quarter to eight and I'm like no no I can't do this which is not late quarter to eight is a good time but luckily for me Paul was already up so we went downstairs and I had a cup of tea and I looked at him and I said, I'm back to bed, Paul. I'm going back to bed. He's like, that's fine. And he took her down the shop. And they, he said, we're not going in the park, it's all wet. And she said, that's fine. And then they went into the shop and he got her a drink and something else. I can't think what it was. She was good to go. She didn't ask for anything else. She didn't pick anything up like she normally does. Good to go, she was. Which I'm really pleased because she can be a bit of a nightmare. And then she... They came home and of course as soon as she gets home she wakes me up. So we're just pottering around doing very little because the weather's up and down and not the best. She wants to go for a walk. We've had lunch. She wants to go out. I'm like, oh, Jen, I'm too tired. Anyway. Paul says he'd take her out for a walk. I said, we'll just go up the, up the canal and feed the ducks for a bit. 
So that's what they did. They went up and they fed the ducks. And I thought, I'm going to nip upstairs and I'm going to have a quick kip. I did take up a big book that I got on Jack the Ripper. So, so I wanted to get that up out of the way so she can, you know, wreck it. Because it's huge. And she knock it off it and I'll knack her the spine. So she, to be fair, was fine. But as, again, as soon as she got back in from that walk, she woke me up. As soon as she got back in. I wasn't really sleeping very well, I was just thinking in bed really and relaxing. And then I sent Paul up. This is still like half this is like still only about two o'clock in the afternoon. And I said to Paul, go and have a lie down for a couple hours. He says, Are you sure? It's not fair. I said, Look, don't worry, I'm fine. You know, we'll watch some TV, I'll borrow your really nice noise cancelling headphones, she can watch what she wants, and I'll watch Finders Beepers or I'll listen to a pod I was gonna listen to a podcast, but that didn't happen. Because she kept throwing stickers in my face and I want this one, so I sort of stopped for a minute. And then eventually she said, I wanna watch Peppa Pig on you sit on you and watch Peppa Pig. I went, Oh come on then. And then she sat on me. And that was fine, but of course I'm still knackered. So when he comes back down but I thought, I said, I'm going upstairs for half an hour to have a rest just to get out of the way. I'm, I, it, the main reason was this one person that she watches, she loves watching, and it's called Nat and Essie or something. It's Toys Unlimited. Oh, my God. But I've, I mean, it's great. It's great for toys. But, oh, my God. That woman's voice goes right through me. I'm sure my voice annoys people. It annoys me. But, oh, it just says, it's, it's Nat and Essie at Toys Unlimited. And it's like, oh my god. And she pronounces things wrong, like the Peppa Pig one's Jen like, so she loves Peppa Pig. And she calls Richard Rabbit Richard. And it's like, no, it's not Richard, it's Richard. And Susie Sheep is Susie Ship. I mean, is, she, is it not? She's not a ship. She doesn't sail on the ocean. She is a sheep. She goes, bah. So you can tell I get very, 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 very irritated by this woman <laughs> and uh, yeah I do it's terrible I hate it her voice just oh it's just me some people's voices are like that and you do so I'm sure my voice probably irritates some people but you know that's the way it is but I, I can't escape it <laughs> eventually because she settled down to watch I was able to put a noise cancelling headphones on and watch something else so and then when then Paul came down I went back up to get away from that voice like I said because oh my god I can't stick it there we go, it's bold. Not a lot done to do now, which is great. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to finish it online. There's no way I can finish it on, on, on camera. Be here all night. Well, not all night, but, you know. I'll be on like that. You know, it's going to take another good 40 minutes to finish. I'll turn it around now. Just carry on doing it upside down. And I'd probably just do these little fiddly bits off camera. Because, um, yeah, because they're fiddly and I'm not in a fiddly mood. And then, of course, you know, we don't want to be here all night. And um, I would like to do a very quick uh, marker video for our last colouring chat, which I'll probably film Tuesday night and put it up Wednesday. Because I just think that would be nice to have a quick marker, marker video in, something like um, Ava Brown's Chibi Girls Grayscale or something like that, you know. I do, I think that would be nice. So that will just be... Thing. But this I can finish upstairs. Or even downstairs in the evenings when... Jen's not bad. I, I, if I watch TV, I, I can I do sit there and colour for a fair bit. Some night, not not every night, but some nights I'll just think right, I'm going to colour now and watch TV. Sometimes Paul will watch the football, so I'll put some music on my my phone, or listen to a podcast, or watch a video on my phone, listen to an audio book. Depends what I'm in the mood for, and I'll just sit there and have I put his headphones back yet? Yeah, yeah, I've good. Um, I'll sit there and colour and listen to something on my phone. And it's great, it's really nice. But he, uh, you know, because I like to sit with him. And, and, and I usually sit through the football till half time. And then I'll either go and have a shower and go to bed. Because I like one at night. Or I'll just go to bed if I've had one early on in the day. Depending on what day it is and 
what Jennifer's up to because obviously when she's around it's hard to have a shower and day you know don't really want to be watched having a shower it's bad enough that she comes in and watch me while I'm going to the bar to the toilet when she will but there you go but yeah so we'll um yeah do that you know and it's quite nice to sit there and I, I colour for 40 minutes or half an hour or an hour depending on what sort of mood I'm in sometimes I might think oh I don't want to do anymore and I'll just stop and other nights I can colour for hours at the moment I'm enjoying it but like I said most of what I've done this month has been patterns I've just not been in a detail mood I've just wanted to do oh look a little what's it Yeah, what's it called? A mandala or something like that. Especially if it's in the evening and I'm in bed and I'm trying to relax. Something like a, a nice mandala. It's not too complicated, like a Jade Summer Easy Mandalas or something like that. Or mandalas for beginners. Some, something really like that. It's just so easy to just sit and just put a piece of colour down and you pick three or four colours and you're like, right, I'm just going to do these. And it's really nice, really nice to just do that and see what happens next, you know, see what it looks like at the end. So like I said, there's not a lot to do left on this one. So I might just do this bit of the window frame and then call it a night because we will be on, mm, yeah, we're about 40 minutes nearly, I think. We did 60, yeah, we're about, nearly on 40 minutes. Not worried about that because it's got to be done as well. This is a really cute book. Um, I like it. It's quite detailed, but it's too detailed for some markers. The spaces are quite small. Do you know what? I haven't done a single handle in this year. I don't think I'm gonna have to pick up, pull out one of my handle in books. I think do, do a handle in. I have not. Oops, you can't even see what I'm doing. I do apologise. I was just doing this bit here. Sorry. Uh, I think I might have to pull out my handle in book next month and do at least do one, maybe two. I think that's, I think Howlin's books, one of her books, is on my list. I think it's uh, Women's Girls Through the Holidays. Because I didn't get that just before Christmas when it came out. And like I said, there's holidays all year round, so... I can do one of them. Oh, this nib's broken. How annoying. Is it? Yeah, it's a bit loose, but it's alright. I think Jennifer pushed these off the sofa at one point, so some of the nibs are broke. Some of the, the leads aren't very good. That's one reason I can't like to cut upstairs when I'm in bed, because you can't touch anything. Yeah, I think I will do a handling one soon. I haven't vlogged properly in the last couple of days, so if you're looking forward to a really good weekly vlog, it's going to be blinking awful. Though, the good news is that the five mile restriction has now been lifted, lifted, I can't even say that, lifted, and we can now travel anywhere within Wales. We can't go anywhere else, we can't go out of Wales, but we can go anywhere in Wales. And to me, that's fine. I can live with that because it means... I can go to the to the range and I can go which is in Newport which is about seven miles away I can go to Cardiff which is always a nice trip you know I can go to Blackwood I can go to Caerphilly anywhere that's you know in Wales I can travel to now which would be nice so I'll be a, at some point you might actually see a few more places <laughs> I haven't been for a while. I'm going to turn this sideways just because it's going to be a bit easier. And I will like, I'm quite happy to turn the books. I do apologise if you don't like it. Oops. See, and I'm knocking the uh, camera with my boobacles, the tripod. Sorry, I say boobacles because it's funny for Jennifer. She gets boobies. Okay, there. Boobacles. Yeah. I think that's actually part of the wood there and there. Oh, that does make it hard when it's fiddly like this. 
see. Well, all the way down. I've got to do it down the other side, yeah? Hang on, let's do that side. Can you see what I'm doing? You couldn't see it the first time, but it's like there's some bits down here that's not part of this ornate stuff. Which will do a very light colour. I like to be bothered. Well, I'll do it off camera probably because we are really over 40 minutes now. And while that's good from an algorithm point of view, I don't really want to send you sleep because all I've talked about is urban exploration and my terrible photography skills, which are not that bad, but you know, I ain't no David Bailey or Annie Leibovitch for that matter, or even a Vivian Mayer. Oh dear, I love her work, mind. And what I'll do in a minute is before I go up to bed, because it's late and it's, the clocks go forward tomorrow so we lose an hour, is I will convert this, well I'll put it onto my laptop and hopefully I will convert it over by morning and then I'm going to upload it straight away. Like I said, I've only got the path of beers and this trim and floor to do and these bits. It's not much. But this video is long enough as it is, so it's going to be one of those when I finish it off camera. Like I do background sometimes, this time it's just that it's so fiddly. There's not enough to make another video with, but I also don't want to um, make this video too much longer than it is. As I said, I know it's over 40 minutes. And this is going to turn off at half past anyway, at 30 minutes anyway, because it only... It only records for 30 minutes. It's so much easier using this big camera though. This is the camera I would use for photography if I was taking photographs. Although I do use my phone a lot these days because it is quite a good phone. I've got to find the attachment so I can put the, the close-up macro lens on it. I was enjoying that for a while. I've, I don't actually know what I've done with it. It's here somewhere. It will turn up. I'll have to have a look for it. Because there's nothing wrong with taking photos on your phone. I do it loads. Anywho, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to love you and leave you guys because like I said, I'm not going to make this any longer. It is long enough and I'll probably do some more of this tomorrow night, but it's really pretty. Like I said, I've only got the bears and the path to do and then this bit of trim and the trim on the curtain here, the bottom of the bed and the, f and the floor and that's it. So it'll be finished by finished pictures days uh, i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have give it a thumbs up uh, leave me a comment down below do you want me to colour in handling next or you know be, uh, you know just a quick marker picture in a handling book actually would be a good idea i might do that or, or just should i do uh, 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 an ava brown grayscale chibi girls let me do well, us chibi girls too actually but let me know what you want me to colour in next so it's handling any one of the handling books be one of the simpler ones or ava brown's chibi girls to grayscale i'll see you in the next one which won't be long, I promise. Bye guys.